Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make this ship at sea animation. Now keep in mind that the one you're looking at here is my original. So I'm going to be going through the whole process of setting up this ocean. I'm going to show you where to get the ship for free. We're going to be bringing it in, animating it. Then we're also going to be adding in some cloth physics and some wind to make everything flap here. The only thing I'm not going to be doing is just these little dudes that I've added in. I've just done that as an extra thing in my original and adding in a flag. So those are things you guys can do as extras if you want to but this is still going to be an awesome animation as we make this whole ship kind of thing so i really hope you guys enjoy let's jump in and have some fun so before we get started there are just two things you're going to want to download um, to get started with one is going to be this wonderful ship model from polyhaven it's completely free you don't need to create an account or anything to use it so i'm going to put a link to this in the description below you can come here and select your different sizes i'm going to go 4k and then you could just download. By default, it's set as a blend file here. Now, the way this is gonna download, I'll just quickly let you know, it's gonna download as a zip folder and you're gonna to have to go ahead and extract that zip folder onto your computer. Now, for my example, I'm just gonna work on my desktop here, okay? Just to make things a little bit simpler. So here I have this extracted zip. Inside of there, there's a blend file and there's the texture. So I'm just gonna put that somewhere on my desktop. And then the other one you're gonna to wanna to download is just this one here, which is a HGRI. I'm gonna go with the 8K, go ahead and download it. And once that's downloaded, it's just gonna be a HGRI file, or actually an EXR file, a .EXR, as you can see here. And uh, that will make sense later why we're gonna use it. That's just gonna be our environmental lighting. But for now, you're gonna go ahead and jump into Blender. And inside of Blender, we're gonna select all the default objects. We're just gonna delete them. Um, I guess we could have kept the cube, but I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a plane. And um, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go over to our modifiers, we're gonna go add modifier. And we're gonna go over, and we're gonna give this an ocean modifier. Okay, and all of a sudden it gets really big, which is fine, that's normal. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here and make these two five by five. So five by five, so five here and five on the X and the Y. And then we're gonna come here to the resolution and they should both be set to seven. So this is what we're gonna have here, okay? Something like this. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna animate this over time. Let's come over here and take the waves, under the waves. Let's come here and increase the scale a little bit. Um, let's take the choppiness up just a wee bit and let's come and animate it by going to, I think the time up here. I'm gonna come to frame one and with the time here, we're gonna click on this little um, animate property here just to add a keyframe and then we're gonna come all the way to frame 250 and we're gonna type in 12 and then we're gonna click on this again to add in a keyframe here and let's select both of these keyframes press T and then go uh, linear so we want it just to be a linear animation no easing in no easing out so now if you play this you're gonna see we have this um, animation now a uh, big downside of this is it's very repetitive as you can see here um, but Hopefully you won't notice too much of the angle we're gonna be looking at and with the ship in the animation. What we're gonna do for now, we're gonna grab this and we're gonna to go to our top orthographic view. We're gonna go G, we're gonna move it more to the middle of our scene like this. So you can see it's kind of like we've got our Y axis line running for the middle and our X in the middle here, roughly like that. And let's just maybe move it back just a bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go file, we're gonna go append and let's go to our desktop or wherever and we're gonna get that ship, Pinace, click on it. I'm gonna click on the blend file and then we're gonna to go to the object and then we're just gonna press A to select everything. I'm gonna go append. And while we have all of this active, we're just gonna press M, M on our keyboard and go new collection. Let's just call this ship and go okay. Now over here, we can see we have this on our main collection and now we have the ship so we can turn it on and off. And that's gonna be important later when it comes to organizing. Um, there are quite a few things that come with the ship. For now, let's just grab our ocean and press H to hide it. And let's grab all of these text objects here, like so. And let's just press M and go new collection. Let's just call it text and go OK. And let's just turn it off for now so we don't see it. In fact, let's turn it off for the render mainly because we don't want to see it in the final render. We could just leave it here, it's fine. And then what we want to do is maybe select these guys over here these little objects here, let's just go M and move them to the text as well. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our ship here. And we're gonna go to our top orthographic view and we're gonna go R to rotate it like so. Yeah, a little bit of rotation like that. So now you can see it's at a bit of an angle. Then we're gonna go into our front view. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a camera. 
And with that camera, um, in fact, let's just go to our top view and go G, Y, and just move it forward in our scene. And with this camera, I'm just gonna scale it up a bit so I can see it better. And I'm gonna go to my camera settings. I'm gonna give it a focal length of 75. And now we're gonna go into our camera view and with our camera active, we're gonna press G and our middle mouse button. And we can zoom back and just get a nice view that we like, something like this. Then let's go ahead and go Alt H to bring back our ocean. And now we have this, okay? So you can at this point, um, I actually encourage you guys to grab that rig and just rotate it and get something that looks good to you. And also at this point, you can also grab your camera, move that around, adjust it, whatever works for you. So you can see this is what we have, okay? But how do we make this? In fact, let's just quickly for now save it. I'm just gonna go save as, save it to my desktop and go um, ship toot. You can call yours whatever you want. Let's go ahead now and make this ship follow along with the wave. That's kind of important. So we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna tab into edit mode and with this plane active, we're gonna go S to scale it up about as big as the ship. And then we're gonna right click and go subdivide and let's go to our subdivision and let's give it something like 10 subdivisions. And then we're gonna go to our object data properties. We're gonna to go to our vertex groups and create a group and assign all of these to that group. Now we're gonna tab back out. Now we're gonna grab our ship rig over here the one you can see um, right over here. So this rig, we're gonna select it. And then we're gonna just go over to our constraints here. We're gonna go add object constraints. We're gonna go copy location. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to the target here. In fact, let's click on this little eyedropper and let's select that plane that we just added in, this one over here. So just to reiterate um, the plane we just added in, that's the one we selected here, okay? And then when you come here to the vertex group and select all of those and that vertex group there. And now if we grab this plane and we go to our modifiers, we give it a shrink wrap, click on an eyedropper and then click on our ocean. Now it's kind of molded to our ocean. So now if we go into a camera view, we hit the space bar, you should actually see the ship is now moving. It is actually bobbing up and down in the water, which is really cool. Now obviously we don't wanna see this plane in the renders. So let's go to our object properties. Let's go to our visibility. Let's turn it off in the render. And under our viewport display, let's just come to the display as and make it wire. We're also just gonna go M, new collection. Let's just move that. In fact, we don't need to create a new collection for that. Just cancel that, okay? Um, let's just drag that plane into the main collection at the top here. Okay, so now we've already done two things. We've added in our ocean. We've added in our ship. We've made it bob a little bit, but let's now grab our rig. Let's go into our pose mode. And now we're gonna do something a little bit extra. We're gonna to come to our first frame. And at this point, we're gonna grab this bottom controller over here and we're gonna enable auto keying. And on frame one, we're gonna kind of slightly tilt our ship. And this is gonna kind of be random. I'm gonna kind of move up a little bit and then tilt it this way a little bit. And now we're just kind of adding this side to side tilt. Now, you're gonna to have to look at your ship and, and kind of determine where the waves are coming and just kind of do something that makes sense. So over here it's lifting. So I might just kind of tilt it a little bit more. And then over here it's the waves kind of falling back over here. So I might just tilt it a little bit like that. This is gonna be completely random, okay? So you guys don't have to do it at all exactly the same way I am, but something like this should be fine, okay? So now I'm gonna quickly just hit the space bar. I'm gonna turn off auto king. And now it's looking a lot better with that ship kind of tilting side to side like that. Okay, so now that's really looking good. I'm gonna go out back into object mode. And the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna start um, adding some physics to these sails here and some effectors so they kind of blow in the wind. So before we actually add um, any sort of physics to our sails, let's just add in some wind. So we're gonna go shift A and Blender has these cool things down here called force fields. And we're gonna add in the wind. We're gonna go G and move that wind up. You can see it's this little object here. You're gonna go over to the object data properties for this. You're gonna increase the size to about five meters or so. And then you're gonna rotate it this way. And then you're gonna to go to your physics properties. And let's give that a strength of something like 550. And let's come over here, G and move it over here like so. And let's go shift D to duplicate, move another one up. And this one, we're gonna kind of rotate a little bit more in and a little bit more off to the side. So something like that's good. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab this rig on the ship. The rig, I'm gonna go into pose mode. And inside of pose mode, you can see all of these names pointing to these different sails. You're just gonna grab each one of them and go G to move them down like so. 
And don't worry if they're not matching up, that'll fix itself in a second. So just go G, pull them down to open them up. So all of these ones here, you can do as many as you want. Just like that, just grab them, pull them down to open up all these sails. Same with this one over here. Don't worry if they're not matching up in a second. That's normal. And then go G, pull this one down, G, grab this one, move it down. And this one, so we're kind of like, um, I guess so this one here has something weird going on. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into object mode. And if we grab one of these sails and tab in and out of edit mode, in fact, let's just select everything and tab in and out of edit mode, and it should fix that um, issue there. I don't know why it does that, but now we have that fixed. So now if we go to the first frame and hit the space bar, you can see we have these sails here, but they're just standing really still, and that's no good. We want some, um, some cloth physics happening here so they can blow and flap in the wind. Now, thankfully, this is really easy to do. So let's start by grabbing this one at the front here, and we'll work our way up. So we're gonna grab this one here. We're gonna go give it a cloth. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode. Inside of edit mode, we're gonna select these corners here. So this corner, this corner, this corner on the vertex, and this one here. Then we're gonna to go to our um, object data properties, create a new group, double click, just call it pin, and then go assign. Then you're gonna tab back out. You're gonna to go to your physics, and uh, we've already given it a cloth over here, as you can see, but we're gonna go down, and we're gonna go down to our shape, and under the pin groups here, we're gonna go ahead and select pin. And now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, you're gonna see now it is flapping in the wind and going along with our animation. But what we wanna do is we wanna come here to the cache, and we wanna make sure to save, and let's go and bake this in. So once you bake it, um, it's gonna stay like that. So even if you change your wind, it'll stay in that same position. If you change your animation, it's gonna stay in that same position. So you'd have to come and delete the bake and then bake it again. But now you can see it's baked into our blend file. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that to all of them. So let's just, I'm gonna do a few more examples. So let's grab this one over here. We're gonna tab into edit mode. Let's select a corner, a corner, a corner, and a corner over here. Let's go ahead and create a new group, call it pin assign it, tear back out, and let's go over to our physics, give it a cloth, go down to the shape, select the pin groups, go pin, go to frame one, and let's just quickly go ahead and bake that in. And there we have it, that one is now also flapping in the wind. Now, because this is so simple to do, and I've already shown you guys uh, a very easy example here, um, it's no point in me going and doing all of these in a tutorial. You've already seen how to do it. So now I go ahead, use the technique I've just shown you with these two sails here and do it to all of them. So we've done the first two here, go all the way up and then all the way back and cache it in for all of them. Make sure to save as you go. And when you're done, come back and we'll continue to the rest of the tutorial. And here you can see I've now gone through and I've done that same cloth technique for each one of these and cached it in, right? So they're all now kind of blowing in the wind. And uh, if you kind of feel like they're a little bit too stiff, you can kind of decrease the strength of the wind. But overall, I'm kind of happy with the way this is. They're kind of flapping in the wind. And that just adds a bit more realism to this animation. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead to our world environment. We're gonna go to color. We're gonna go environment texture. We're gonna go open. And we're gonna get that HUI that we um, downloaded in the beginning. Remember, we downloaded two things. We're gonna go open image. And then we're gonna to go to our render settings. We're gonna change it to cycles. And if you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then to the max samples, I recommend you go higher, but because I'm just doing a tutorial, I'm just gonna go with 50 samples and make sure denoise is enabled. Then you're gonna go control S, make sure to save. And then you're gonna go control B and drag over your camera to limit the rendering to the camera. And then we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a sunlight. We're gonna go G to move it over to the side. And let's give that a strength of 12. And in our front view, we're just gonna go G, move it over to the side a bit more and rotate it like so. And then we're gonna come here and duplicate it and rotate it a little bit. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should see this. Um, obviously the ocean doesn't have a material yet, don't worry about that for now. And let's go back into our solid view and let's grab our ocean here. Let's go ahead and give that a subdivision surface modifier, just to smooth things out a little bit. And let's also go ahead and give it, in fact, let's go back to the, um, the modifiers here. Let's just turn that off for the viewport so it's not as um, laggy in the viewport. And let's go ahead to our materials, let's just go new. And 
let's just go give this a little bit of, of kind of like a little color like this, a little bit of bluish green. Let's go down, bring the roughness down um, quite a bit. And let's go down to the up to transmission here and increase that all the way up to a value of one. And now if we go Z and we go render it, we've got this, but it looks a bit too smooth for my liking. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our shading workspace and we're gonna go into our camera view. And we're gonna come over here and go Shift A and let's add in a noise texture. And let's go ahead, Shift A search, get a color ramp, plug the color into the factor. Shift A search, let's get a bump node, plug the color into the height and let's grab these three, move them down and let's plug that normal into the normal of the printable. And let's go ahead and bring the scale up to something like 50. Let's bring the strength down to 0.1. And now if we go Z and we go rendered. I guess it wasn't working quite well so I took the strength up to 0.2 and I brought the scale here down to 12 and just mess around with my color ramp a little bit. But another thing we can do is we can go Shift A, we can add in a plane, scale it way up, move it down, and let's give that a material and let's just make that a little bit darker, kind of like a darker kind of muddy color. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, the ocean is looking a little bit darker, which is kind of cool. Um, so let's add in some mist at the moment. I think that's gonna make a big difference. Let's go over to our um, passes over here under our view layer properties. Let's enable mist. Let's go to our um, camera, let's grab our camera. Let's go to our camera settings. Let's go down to viewport display. Let's enable mist so we can see it. Let's go to our world settings. Let's go to the mist pass. Let's increase this value here. So where the, this number is here is where the mist starts and the end here is where the mist ends. Let's take that up to something like close to 300. This one will kind of leave at 70 meters or so. And now if we go ahead, we can go render and then render the image. And here you can see, we now have it rendered. Um, the ocean looks a little bit, um, I don't know, it doesn't really have the sharpness we're looking for. I might get rid of the um, subdivision surface modifier, but for now, just to demonstrate how the mist pass is gonna help this, let's just close this. Let's go to our compositing. Let's enable use nodes. And then go shift a search and get a view node. Plug the image into here so we can see. And then hold and shift and right click and just drag over these two to kind of connect them together. And you can press V to zoom out. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift a search and get a mix, place it over here and make sure the image is going to the top image. Take the mist and plug it into the factor. And now this image here, the, the color down here is gonna be our mist color. So you can make that whatever you want. Obviously just stick with kind of like a little bit of a slightly off white. And there you have some nice mist. If you wanna control it, go shift a search and get a color ramp, place that on the mist here. And now you have a way of controlling the fall off here. And you can also adjust the values to determine, to determine how much you want to come through here. So I'm gonna go something like that. I think that looks good. And that just gives us a little bit of depth there to the image here and a little bit of mist. Um, so now um, let's go back to our layout. I'm gonna grab this ocean. I'm gonna go ahead, get rid of the subdivision surface modifier. I might bump up the render resolution a little bit. And what else I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna to go to my render settings. I'm gonna go down and enable motion blur. Make sure to save. And now let's just drag for our animation, get a nice little um, shot here that looks good. And let's go render and render the image. And there we have it guys. That is how you make a ship at sea. So if you really want this to look even better, you can now go ahead and add your own touches to it. I'll quickly show you guys my original, okay? This is the exact same thing. Everything I showed you guys now is exactly what I did here, okay? Uh, only difference is I went ahead and added a flag at the back here, um, just for a little bit of extra visual interest. And I grabbed these two guys that I got from Adobe Mixamo. They came pre-animated. And I just dragged them into the scene here and parented them to the ship and animated them. I put some little simple swords in their hands and that really added some extra flair to this animation. I also, um, oh yeah, I also changed the field of um, the camera setting, so I changed it to 900 on the Y just to make it a little bit um, look a little bit more cinematic. So you can kind of do the same thing. If we go over here to our original, let's just make it 900 instead of 1080. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Unfortunately, I can't upload this to my Patreon as the file is just too massive and Patreon has a limit. So um, sorry about that, but I do have a lot of other cool stuff that I do upload to Patreon. So it's still worth checking that out in the description. You can also check out my Skillshare if you wanna try, try and sign up for one month. 
for free. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.